Okay. Um, first definition. is what is an angle in standard position. And before we write out the definition, you don't have to write this down, we're going to play a little game. And the game is called Angles in Standard Position or Not. Such a great game title. And the way that the game works is on this side, we're going to say yes. On this side, we're going to say no. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an angle, and I'm going to label that angle, and we have to decide if that angle is in standard position or not. The idea is at the end of the game, after playing the game, you have to think, how would you put this in your own words then? I've seen a bunch of examples, and what we're doing right now is we're sort of doing an example definition where you see things that are the definition and aren't the definition, and then you have to put into words what the actual definition is. Sounds like such a fun game. You're going to play it all weekend. I know. Here we go. So here is our first angle. We're going to have an angle right here. We're going to go to it from there. Did it? No, it didn't group together. I'll group it together. Oh, did it? I hope. They updated the smartboard. Some of the old tricks that the smartboard used to do don't work anymore. So I have to do this so much longer. And we take this one, and this one is in standard position, so I'll put it on this side. Okay. Give you another example. Um, And this one yes. is not. Mm. Okay. <laughs> this is good. While it takes me time to group this together, you can make your decision. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I want to see if some other things were still work. Oh, oh that. Oh, man. So disappointed my smartphone used to be that you could really throw things really well. And also, they used to bounce. I used to play mini golf on the sort of It's like, can't be all the fun things you can do. Okay, that one's a no. Um, trying to do with examples is keep introducing like oh that's kind of a new thing that happened is this still an angle in standard position or not does it cause it a problem this one is a yes and about oh, I just did I guess it decided it was fine and grouped all together. No. No. Okay. So sometimes we, when we play this game, we slowly put things into the yes side, into the no side, and you start getting, 
you start recognizing some patterns. So even if you can't say the definition, I might draw something and you're like, oh, that looks kind of like what we did in example one, so I'm going to say it's a yes. But eventually we want to be able to come up with what are the key characteristics of the yes that are not in the no? To start from zero, or what, what we're going to say, and the way I, I know exactly, it starts from, here's the green line, I think that's what you're saying here. None of these other ones started from that green line, right? This one started from the positive y-axis, this one started over here. So that's going to be an important part of our definition. An angle and standard position And zero is a little bit hard because couldn't zero mean the origin? Or how do we describe this part? And we're going to describe it. So it starts on the positive x-axis. We're going to find out later that when it goes clockwise, like this second one, that some of you wanted to say no because it went the wrong direction, is okay. We'll call those negative angles. But we didn't deal with a lot of negative angles in grade 11 math. We also didn't deal with big angles. Like this one goes around more than once. All the way around with 360 degrees plus another 180, 540. Maybe this one's close to 600 degrees but you can have angles more than once. So the key thing in standard position is that it always starts in the positive x-axis. And this is important because as mathematicians, we want standards so that if Lily's talking about 75 degrees, it doesn't get confused with Trenton's 75 degrees, which is somewhere else. So we want to be able to describe that the same way. So we say angles in standard position and we did a bunch of examples to figure that out. Our next definition, we're not going to play these games all period. As fun as they are, they do take a little bit more time, but it's a good way of seeing a definition. If you can see a bunch of examples and then see some counterexamples, you can come up with the definition easily. Our second definition that you learned in grade 11 that we're going to review that's super important and comes up lots in grade 12 is reference angles. And I'm going to write that word in green because it's sometimes missed. And I'm going to underline <coughs> this part in purple because that's the main part of the definition. So a reference angle is a positive angle to the nearest x-axis. So every angle in standard position also has a reference angle. So for example, and this time we did the definition first, and now we're sort of playing the game, is if I gave you an angle of 110 degrees, the reference angle would be this that's left to the nearest x-axis. So that purple part that's labeled is important. So if this is 110, how far is it away from the nearest x-axis? 70 degrees. How did you figure that out? You said, oh, the whole thing's 180. So in order to add up to 180, I need 70 more. <coughs> right? Or someone might have said, start with 180, subtract 110, there would be 70 left. Okay? The reason that purple is very important, okay? 
is I will give you some that are tempting. Here's one that's tempting. If I take this angle right here, that's 275 degrees. It's so close to the y-axis. You will be sometimes tempted to go back to the nearest y-axis. But our reference angle will always go back to the nearest x-axis. So it's this. Now, depending on which way you measure an angle, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. But for reference angles, we just think of it as a positive number. How far away is 275 degrees from all the way around at 360? Anybody do that mental math? 85 degrees. Okay, so this is 85 degrees. Um, if we have our angle represented by a letter, okay, do you know what the most, once again, higher level math, the most common letter used to represent angles? It's a Greek letter. Remember this one? We often use theta to represent an angle. So if I use theta to represent the angle in standard position, notation for a reference angle is theta with a little r beside it. If I used x for my angle, then my reference angle would be x with a little r. Do those look like r's? Sort of. So there's our notation, but often, probably most often, you'll see it as theta with a little reference angle. If we call our main angle theta, we'll use a reference angle. And even if your angle goes around in the negative direction, so here I could have negative, my angle theta would be negative 190 degrees. My reference angle still goes back to the nearest x-axis. My reference angle would be 10 degrees. I find we're going to deal with a lot of negative angles. The negative just means the direction it's going. So when I'm doing my math with negative angles, I generally think positive numbers. If this is going 190 in that direction, does it still make sense that halfway is 180? It's still a 10 degree difference between 180 and 190. I didn't need to do any kind of fancy math with negatives. So negative angles, take the negative away and just say, the negative told me which way it's going, and then I think with positive numbers, you can do all of your math easier that way. There are some that are interesting. Like, what are you going to do with this? Standard position, theta is 90 degrees. How far away is it from the nearest x-axis? 90. Which is the nearest x-axis? The positive one or the negative one? They're both nearest, right? But we would still say for this one, oh, my color coding is going off. Check this out. There we go. I'll change that back. And then I can change this back. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Can I have Caitlin to deal? Caitlin? Yes, please. All right. She'll be right down. So that would be 90 degrees as well. Why are reference angles so important? Well, we're really going to work a lot with from grade 11. Do you remember the cast rule? All right, we'll do another definition. May as well review them all. Cast rule just helps you remember how to write them in order. It could have made someone could have decided it was the act rule. 
but maybe that's not as easy to say as cast. Or they could have started with quadrant one and called it the Astica rule, but it doesn't make an easy English word, I'm not sure. So we call it the cast rule, and the cast rule is connected to reference angles and connected to positives and negatives. Each of these letters stands for either sine, cosine, tangent, and the A stands for all of them. And it's a way to remember where trig functions are positive and negative. And it's connected to reference angles because something cool happens when I do sine of 30 degrees, I can take out my calculator. This one might be one that you have memorized from grade 11. We're going to have a couple that we memorize. We're going to memorize them more this year. But do you remember memorizing that sine of 30 degrees was a half in grade 11? Good. Then if I take sine of 150 degrees, notice that 30 degrees and 50 degrees have the same reference angle. 150 degrees is 30 away from the nearest x-axis. I hope it's pretty obvious that 30 degrees is 30 degrees away from the nearest x-axis. And when they're the same, your calculator spits out the same value. But when I go to quadrant 3, what angle in quadrant 3 has a reference angle of 30 degrees? 210. And if I go to my calculator and I type in sine of 210 degrees, I get a half again, but this time it's negative. And if I would go to quadrant 4, which angle in quadrant 4 has a reference angle of 30 degrees? 330. If I type that in my calculator, I get a half again, but this time it's also negative. So if angles have the same reference angle, all of the sines, all of the cosines, all of the tangents will all be the same. But sometimes they'll be positive, and sometimes they'll be negative. And the cast rule for sine in quadrant 1, all of them are positive. Sure enough, sine of 30 degrees is positive. In quadrant 2, this says only sine is positive. Cosine and tangent will be negative, but for sine, sine of 150 is one half again. When I get to quadrant three, only tangent will be positive, and so sine is negative. And when I type in sine of 210, I still get the half, but now it's negative. So reference angles are important because they create the same number no matter what. But positives and negatives change based on which quadrant. In grade 11, you learned the cast rule. In grade 12, we'll learn it again, but we'll find out a little bit why. Why is it positive in one and not the other? What is the reason? Okay? Um, first of all, just to really understand this, why are the things the same? Well. When you draw 30 degrees in quadrant 1, if you pick any point on there and draw it straight down and make a right angle triangle, you get a right angle triangle with 30 degrees. When I draw 150 degrees, I get a reference angle of 30 degrees. And if I draw a line straight down on this one, I can make the exact same triangle as the other one. Does that make sense? That I could draw? And so you learned triangles, sine, cos, and tan. You remember Sokotoa, sine is the opposite side over hypotenuse. Well, for 150, this is the triangle that I can draw with my reference angle. It has the same opposite it has the same hypotenuse as the other one. Same thing in quadrant three. Same opposite, same hypotenuse. Same 30 degree reference angle. So it creates the same thing for each one. And our last definition, and this one might be new.
And this is an easy definition if we use the English language and some things we already know. Okay. First of all, a terminal angle or the terminal side of an angle is where an angle ends. I'll write out the definition first. I'll write it in words like this. So two angles are coterminal if, that's an F, good recovery. If they have the same terminal arm, in other words, they end at the same place. Okay? And in mathematics in particular, I find that math definitions are hard when you only have the words, but if you see an example, it's like, oh, well, I see what you mean. Okay? So, for example, if I took and I'll do this one on the same graph. This angle in standard position is, looks like 160 degrees, maybe. Going backwards, that would be negative 200 degrees. Do they end at the same place? So we would say 160 degrees. And 200 degrees are coterminal. Okay? We would also say, yes? Would it be 160 and negative 200? <laughs> Thank you, I need that negative there. I wrote it there, but didn't write it there. So 160 degrees and negative 200 degrees are coterminal. Um, 180 degrees all the way around 360 plus another 180 is 540 degrees. These are coterminal. Now, 180 degrees, if you were skiing, that would be like doing a trick where you do a little bit of a jump and land backwards. I can't do that trick. I just land badly. Okay? Um, 360 degrees in skiing would be doing a jump, turning all the way around and landing front again. You would end exactly the same when I ski. I just do zero degree tricks where I go over, I land back exactly as I was facing, but I end up the same as a 360. But those two angles are technically different, right? It's much more impressive if you take a jump and do a 360 and land than is if you take a jump and do a zero and land, right? And then in the, like, snowboarding, what do they have? They have 360, they have seven, guys do 720s. Do they do 1080s? think so, 1,080, were they three times? I don't know if they ever do more than three. But they sometimes land backwards, they do 180s, or they do 540s, and, right? And it's more impressive if you spin more times, but you end in the same place, right? Doing one of these tricks and ending somewhere else could be bad, right? Your, your goal is the 360, don't do a 375 because that'll be just enough for you to tumble down for a while. So this is the idea of coterminal. You end up at the same place as you started with, but maybe more rotations have happened, or you could go backwards, right, 160, or turning this way, right? I could, if I'm standing here, 
and I want to point at Wyatt, I could do it this way, right? Or I could decide, either way, in the end, I'm going to be pointing at Wyatt, right? Or I could have done this. Well, I should, no, I guess. I was going to spin more, and then I was going to get dizzy, and then I'd probably fall down. So that could be a little bit disastrous. But these are coterminal angles, angles that end in the same place. So, I mean, in your notes, you could also, they've got the definition, and see if I can find it on yours. There it is. So on page 468. Right in the middle of the page, we wrote our definition as well, but you can highlight it here. Angle in standard position with the same terminal arm are coterminal angles. And there's lots of them, like here's 40, is also coterminal with 400, also coterminal with 760, also coterminal with negative 320, also coterminal with 680. So. Does it make sense that there are an infinite amount of coterminal angles with something? Mm -hmm. And this is going to pose a sort of, sort of mental problem. Because I'm going to ask you, can you write them all down for me, please? And you're like, but there's an infinite amount of them. So either you want me to keep writing forever, which is not good because chances are you'll die before forever comes. That's not positive. But I'm going to ask you to write them all down. So we're going to find out how to write them all down. And they have that. Is it here? Yeah. Here is the idea for writing them all down. You start with one of them. So I'm going to start with 40 degrees. And does it make sense that if you add or subtract, so I'm going to start with adding 360 degrees, as many times as I want, I will end at the same place. If I'm pointing in one direction and turn 360, I'll point to the same direction again. If I do that twice, I'll still end in the same spot. So the way that we write out all of them is we take 360 degrees and we multiply it by k, and we say that k is any positive or negative integer. This is the symbol for positive and negative integers. Positive and negative whole numbers. So this means that you could have 0, which means you just have 40 degrees where you started with. You could have 1, which would get you to 400. You could have negative 1, which would get you to the minus 320. And this writes them all out. And we just solved the problem of writing forever. We've created a formula. And in the formula, we have the forever thing by saying we're using every single positive and negative integer that could exist to write this out. All right, we're ready. There's a long intro for this part. And we're ready for example number one. And it deals with coterminals. So determine the measures of all the angles between negative 800 and 800 that are coterminal with 85. Sketch the angles. So here, is 85. Technically, 85 degrees is coterminal with itself. It ends in the, does 85 degrees end at the same place as 85 degrees? Yes. If you added 360 once, do you see that you would get 445 degrees? Maybe I'll change that. Because it asks us to sketch, so I'm going to change that to purple. And I'm going to draw 445 degrees on here. Like that. If you add 360 degrees again, do you see that you would get 805 degrees? I'm going to write 805 degrees 
But I'm going to put an X through it and stop. Why? Because it's over 800. The question said only up to 800. So I realize that I've gone far enough. But I could also go in the negative direction. So I will switch to green here. If I took 85 and I subtracted 360 degrees, do you see that you would get negative 275? So that would be going in this direction, it would be negative 275 degrees. And if you're at negative 275 degrees and you want to find another one in the negative, you could just subtract 360 degrees again, which will give me negative, whew, feeling a little stress of mental math. Someone have a calculator? Does that work out? If you take negative 275 and subtract 360, do you get negative 635 degrees? Okay, I want, I'm color coding, so I'm going to negative, here we go, oops, wrong way, negative direction, the orange one, negative 635 degrees. Can you see if I subtracted 360 again, I'd be past negative 800? So this is our final answer. This diagram is crazy. It's a whole bunch of spinning things in it. In fact, what just like you might not have noticed, but at this moment, I actually hypnotized all of you. Don't worry, I'll pull you out of it. You're you're in, you're in, right now. You are in a state of hypnosis. I can do all sorts of like influential things. I'll do a couple positive ones. So you like. Now, you think your math homework is fun. So after this, I'm going to wake you guys up. You won't remember any of this, but you'll just be like, oh, math is fun. I, I feel like doing my math homework tonight. All right, so I'm going to, there you go. All right, welcome back. Um, yeah, so there we have all of our coterminal angles, and we sketch them. And actually writing all of them down, so part B, you just start with one of them. So this is all coterminal angles. We start with our 85 degrees, and then we say we can add 360 degrees as many times as we want, or subtract it as many times. So we add that k, but we have to just say that that k belongs to the integers, because then we'll add or subtract 360 degrees as many times as we want, and that will add them all. Okay, questions for practice? Four and five.